you miss out. The thoughts just have to come out, though. These thoughts have been on my mind, and they have to come out. I don't think you guys realize the stance that I took against streaming has brought a lot of heat. A lot of heat that I was prepared for. A lot of conversations that some people weren't prepared for. But we're going to have to have them. So let's get to it. Axton was good. Joseph was good. El Marquis. All right, here we get it. I think it's time. DIY. DIYers, welcome. This is not another episode of Curtis King Reacts, but I am reacting. This is my last week of computer work, my last week of looking into the news for stories and things to react to. Um, not because I'm doing future episodes, just because I'm still on the internet. I'm promoting an album, and uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But in the midst of me, let me turn this music down. In the midst of me doing all that is kind of like shutting down of my business at the end of the year, in the midst of me doing this, of course, it's always something to pull you back. Now, there's a lot of things that have been said about me in the last week, two weeks, and a part of me knew, hey, Curtis, before. You start talking about your objection to streaming. You know that's a powerful conversation that involves a lot of powerful people. And I said, yes. I said, also, it's going to be people who are going to attack you for things that have nothing to do with your stance on streaming because it's hard to have a strong stance on streaming when you look at the kind of bull stuff that's out there, right? It's it's really challenging to have a, an an, oppo, an opposition, excuse me, to streaming or not opposition, but a, a a stance, a strong stance. When it's like, first of all, most of us that are watching this content, I assume are artists. I assume we're artists who enjoy this craft as a first priority. We learn about business because we know that to sustain our careers. To grow our careers, money must be involved. Things are expensive, especially now. But you know what I'm noticing is a sort of a swelling of a con it's a swelling of a voice in the independent hip hop space in which people are kind of like switching around words and making it just seem like the art itself. First, it's the art's not worth anything because of streaming. Now it's the art itself should be deprioritized de in the name of business if you want to be successful. I disagree with this notion, and I'm going to pull up a few different references as we go through it. But um, I just want to make sure I get the chat up here. I want to make sure I give you a little bit of a point of references before we get started, because this is not clickbait. I am genuinely, genuinely, genuinely disappointed. Uh, not, not, not so much at the homie DJ Payne one, but really at Damian Ritter, man. And I'm disappointed only because I looked to him. I looked up to him at one point in time when I was independent and part of this label called Black Cloud Music. We used to watch the documentaries of Funk Volume. We used to watch the ascension of Hobson. We used to watch what they were doing as a business and we got so inspired because we said, man, maybe maybe that could be us. Maybe that can be us. And what they were doing was so revolutionary, right? Watching Hobson meet fans at the skate park and play a game of skate with them before a show. It made us look in our community and say, which ways can we kind of really interact with people? And it changed our way of thinking because it was so community based and so independent. However, just like any human being, things shift over time, especially as your business models change and you meet new people. And maybe you don't have the same opinion that you may or may not have had of the traditional record business. For those who don't know, because I know there's some of you that have come here because of my reaction videos and you're like, I don't know who these folks are. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, 
me bring bring your attention here. So, up at the top left hand corner, you have Damian Damian Ritter, who I brought up earlier. To the right, you have a very talented and prolific producer, uh, YouTube based. Uh, in terms of his prolific output of content, but absolutely stamped. You see the plaques in the back. My man has definitely been doing his thing within the traditional industry, as well as servicing a lot of independent artists. Right. Um, and then Aaron Knight. I'm not too familiar with all of Aaron Knight's uh, things that she does, but I know that based upon the way they talk about her, I know that um, it's very, very uh, uh, reputable. And I'm sure I can get more education. But like I said, my issue is not necessarily with Aaron. Because I think Aaron made some very valid points in uh, reaction to what I said. So to kind of give you, let me turn this music down. To kind of give you an idea of how this all came to be. So six months ago, I pivoted from doing producer content. This is the, this channel that you're watching right here with DJ Payne One. The channel is mostly producer content. I pivoted from doing producer content and... I started to do rapper based content because when I started my YouTube channel, I did rapper and producer. If you go to my first videos, I'll say rapper and producers because I was speaking to both things that I am. I'm a rapper slash producer, more rapper than I am a producer. However, this channel in particular really focuses on music producers, independence, and just really music in general, uh, things that people should look out for, especially if they want to have a thriving, successful business. We I've been going in on streaming for the last two or three months. OK. When I go off like that, I cannot calculate. Going off. I am an emotional, creative human being, sometimes to a fault. <coughs> I cannot calculate market and fake that my disdain for the payout system that exists within Spotify was real. I'm going to tell you why I'm prefacing that right now. My anger towards this threshold system, very real. But as I was talking about this, Dame actually was, uh, he reached out to me on, on Instagram and he said, yo, Curtis, I want, I want to debate you on this. I didn't share this with him, but in my mind, I said, nigga, debate about what? You want to debate my decision to take my music off of streaming? Cause that's what I eventually did after doing all that going off after finding all the information I found. I said, I'm not, I'm not finna sit up here in somebody else's house and complain. I'm moving out. So that's what I did. I didn't tell not one music producer or artist. They should follow my footsteps. However, he wanted to debate this idea. And like I said, what the fuck are we debating? But I said, you know what? I think it'd be great to have a very healthy conversation because I've, I've seen the podcast before and I feel like all three of them, can articulate their points very well. And I thought it'd be a healthy conversation. What they don't, well, I hope they understand is that I am a man in search of information. I'm not a man in search to be right. I'm a man in search of information. So when I find information that contradicts what my prior understanding was, right? When I find information that contradicts my other findings, I want to know because I don't want to be wrong about this. I want to know that my my instincts were what they were. So DJ Payne one, Aaron Knight and Damian Ritter invited me on th to this podcast. This is not the episode, though. This is the reaction to after me being on the episode. I want to share this clip. What's up with you, Flaw TV? I want to share this clip and I want to kind of get your opinion. I want to I'm definitely gonna give you mine, but check this out. So in this portion of the conversation where the video is called responding to Curtis King versus Dame angry comments, which I understand YouTube and I, I just don't know why it was made out to be Curtis King versus Dame. This is Curtis King versus streaming, which, by the way. Nipsey said something, one of his last tweets, having strong enemies is a blessing. and I didn't quite understand it, but when I tell y'all. Just talking about this on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, a lot of strange things have been happening. Nothing that I'm like concerned about my well-being, but a lot of strange things have happened. What I've learned is that without sounding paranoid, the powers that be who do not want you listening to a person like me, 
They don't send suits anymore. They used to do that back in the coin tailed pro days, right? With black, with, with the Black Panthers. They don't send suits anymore, right? Well, I shouldn't say that because that's what the Black Judas was all about, was having somebody that looked like the Panthers get really deep. So never mind, that's probably a bad analogy. But they don't send suits anymore. They send folks who look like they're in the same field as you. But I'm starting to notice the more that I have these opposing voices or the more that I'm listening to folks talk about independence and I'm like, yeah, I don't connect with that. I'm realizing they're all saying the same thing. And I want to pose a question in response to it. But here's what Dame had to say after our interview debate, whatever you want to call it. And I don't even know why I wasn't there to have this conversation, but here it goes. So, yeah, we had a debate with Curtis King about streaming. He took his music off of streaming and he's been going in on streaming, you know, to promote his album. And I would say a few days, once the, once the episode came out last, or this week, I regretted having the conversation. Interesting. Interesting. Dame regrets having this conversation with me that I never asked for, that all I was doing was speaking the truth as I saw it in real time. If I saw something where somebody was like, that's not actually 100% true, Curtis, I apologize and I went back. Same thing I did with Arsonist from Heatmakers. When he said a statement about, you know, the three major labels owning Spotify, I went back and I apologized. But my thing is, how can you regret something that you asked for? I mean, it's, I guess it's true. It's, it's possible. But you asked me to be on. I, I wasn't trying to be on anybody's platform. So this notion that I'm doing all of this for an album promotion, it feels belittling. It feels like you're questioning my integrity. It feels like you're negating the nine years of content that I've made that have been pro-independent. You're negating all of the mentorship that I've done. When you say a statement like this, that it's all about the album promotion. And it's funny because he actually asked me this question. And I want to go back to this after he says this. Check it out. Right. I asked him from the jump. I said, hey, is this is this mark? Is this just marketing for your album? And he basically admitted that it was the answer was yes. So an important word to pay attention to here with Dame is saying, is this just marketing for your album? He did not pose that question the way that he posed it here. Let's go here to exhibit, <laughs> exhibit B. Here's where he actually asked the question. Where is it? Is it this one or this one? I think it's this one. Before we even jump even further into this, like, I mean. So just, this is 10 days prior to today. You can, you can say what your stance is, but I know you have a project coming out. Is the more content that you're putting out, is it is it to push towards, is is the bashing of streaming marketing for the album? Yes, what a straight face. <laughs> he didn't ask, is it just for the album? He said, is it for the album? Yes. I'm gonna let the old Curtis explain it, then the new Curtis is gonna further uh, uh, stand on that, but continue. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is I mean, let me say this: it is not solely for that, but it is Hello. turned into a conversation that said, "These are the people in the demographic that I'm going to be trying to reach through ads, anyways. These are the human beings who I'm going to go direct to consumer." It is. It is. They just talking about streaming is bringing out from the woodworks the people that I didn't know were already sitting there that weren't my own fans who love albums, who love physical product, who love all these things. So when you think about a Curtis King, I'm not somebody who thinks marketing first. I'm somebody who thinks art and creative first. That's always been my model from the beginning of my channel. It's always creativity first, but I am a marketing, I'm, I'm a marketing savant of, of sorts. And it is not that I'm anti-streaming. I listen to streaming every single day as a consumer. It is amazing as a consumer. Right. Even yesterday, I'm shooting visuals for a project not going up on streaming using Apple Music as the 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 mode because let me of stop its functionality. So he poses the question: If the conversation is part of the marketing, yes, it is, because I'm a smart human being, and I understand some people get on this internet and they talk about things they don't do. Some people talk at great length about things they'll never do. In the midst of me going off on streaming, all it took, all it would take is somebody leaving a comment that says, 
You're talking all this shit, but you're still eating off your streams. See, you mean to tell me this before I knew this project was going to be a success. OK, because I've never done this before. You mean to tell me that I sat in a room and said, here's the greatest marketing plan ever. I am going to remove my music from streaming. And I'm going to go direct to consumer and I'm going to make a whole lot of more money just talking shit about streaming. As if I'm not an artist. See, the thing that I'm starting to realize is that. Damien is more a businessman than he is a creative. It's always been the case, right? It's not, a, it's not an insult. That's just who that's his DNA, right? I think a lot of them think that I am as a, as business minded as they are. What they don't understand is that they met me when I started to develop upon my business acumen in this space, because I had to learn business in a way that being an artist beforehand and a producer actually got me screwed. There's so many placements that I talk about that I never got paid for because I didn't know my business. So I came to YouTube and this is my opportunity to kind of learn it. My thing is this. Even if I was a shitty human being who only wanted to rile up the emotions of, of, of artists, does that even sound like your friend? First of all, forget that. Even if I was a shitty human being who did that, right? Riled up everybody's emotions and, and did all that. How many more album sales do you think that's going to be? People who don't care, don't care. Secondly, if that was the case, why does it matter? Really, why does it matter? Marketing is the, the way that we make our message the most clear to the people that need to hear it. Not manipulating people who don't need it, but talking to people who need to hear it the most. That is marketing. Here's where I'm a little bit disappointed in this narrative being out there. Him saying what he said before, and then hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to share this this window with you because I think this is really this is really fascinating. Actually, I'm not even. <laughs> what did what did a uh, 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 anchor man? What did he tell the Baxter? He said, "I'm not even angry. You ate the whole wool of cheese. That's impressive. I'm not even angry. I just need this to be explained because we're playing two sides of the we're playing two sides of the fence right now with this. In my opinion." You talk about me doing this entire thing for an album promotion. My question is this. We had one conversation, maybe an hour and 45, whatever it was. It produced. All of these thumbnails. You mean to tell me that the very same thing that you're saying, I guess, makes my cause less noble marketing is the very same thing that you guys are doing to market this conversation. It's, it's okay when you do it. It's bad when I do it. Why would I not talk about my own journey as an artist when I have experience that could be valuable to the people who are watching a video about why Spotify is going broke? Why I removed my music from Spotify? Don't you think that would be relevant information of what I'm doing with my own music? So, yes, it's marketing. Marketing is a conversation. Marketing is not what some of them click funnel head ass producers do. Right. It's still marketing. It's the sleazy kind of marketing. This is not what this is. The conversations have been genuine. Even more important, the conversations have been impactful. Look at these thumbnails. I think it's awesome that Payne has come a long way with these thumbnails. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. He's actually get my, get my attention. But it's funny how you accuse me of running some kind of scheme <laughs> to to promote my album. How dare me talk about the album I'm working on while teaching independent producers how to get the most money from their projects? Excuse me. But I look at this thumbnail up here. Curtis King debates Dame is me as a boxer. Second one. I'm done with streaming. Are we defending Spotify? I'm not even in this video, but yet my face is on the side of it. I'm not even in that video, but yet my face is on the side of it. So people sent me screenshots of this and I just got to thinking, right? And I was like, okay, like I want to use, I, I, I want cooler hairs to prevail, right? I want cooler hairs to prevail. I don't want to look at this from an emotional standpoint because I'm getting ready to go through a very deep detox and social media detox 
And I want to make sure that I leave this video knowing that I've been respectful of these adults. Right? Respectful of my peers, with, at least in the YouTube space. Peers in this space. But I also want to make sure that I help you guys to understand sort of my train of thought now when I listen to what he says. And then I think about this. The conversation that Damon, ha Damon and I had, I knew the jig was up. I knew that we had a problem when the first things that came out of his mouth for a debate about streaming was this. It's the tradition. Uh, you moved up. You're a, you're a name partner now. Um, before we get started, got to let you let people know that this episode is brought to you by Two Lost, the most advanced, the technologically advanced music distributor out there. You know, a lot of people because we distribute to over 450 stores. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Did you not start a conversation with the man that has been going against streaming not to come on your platform? I never asked that. Did you just start this off with a conversation about your free distribution? You got in, you have a conflict of interest, sir. You got a conflict. You started our conversation about streaming to talk about your free music distribution sponsor that you have financial interest in. I'm sorry that I'm not one of these artists that are too stupid to recognize when this kind of thing happens. I know why some folks don't like this brand of Curtis King. I understand I'm too loud. Sometimes I'm irrational. Sometimes my sense of humor overpowers the point. But I mean, I know what the hell that is. I know what the hell that is. You know how I know that? Because I've been in the traditional music industry and I've heard this kind of professional talk. This is the conversation of it's a business, Curtis. It's a business. Your fast, your obsession with your art is the reason why you won't be good at business. I call cap on that, but let me let me let him finish his commercial. There's a lot of artists find when they move their catalog over that they notice a bump in sales just because we're distributing to more stores. But we got a hell of a lot more features. Log in, check it out. Use the promo code PAIN, P-A-I-N. Don't have to pay anything for three months so you can log in, check it out, <laughs> see all the features and see if it's the right distributor for you. You look at my face down here, I locked in. That's when I knew what the next hour or so was going to bring. Am I crazy? Do y'all see what I see? Do you understand why I talk the way that I talk? Because they're not used to artists being able to articulate themselves like this. They're not used to people who really love the art being able to articulate this, this way and be able to speak about business. You know what I also thought was interesting? Because this really does relate to another video that I want to show you. And this is just going to show you. This is no disrespect to this very fascinating independent artist. This very fascinating independent artist named Nick D. Nick D, uh, he did a podcast episode with Kyle Beats. And in it, he said a few things. Uh, so basically, this is a description from Kyle Beats. Nick D is one of the biggest independent artists in the world. I flew to Cool Pepper, Virginia, and discussed how he became such a huge artist without any label, manager, or distribution deal. I've heard so many times about this gentleman's name. Matter of fact, Damien, or Dame even um, uh, did an interview with him. I didn't watch it, but everybody kept saying, Curtis, check him out, check him out, check him out, check him out. He's changing the game. He's changing the game. Anybody independent changing the game, you know I want to go talk to him. That's why I drove all the way seven hours to go talk to LaRussell because it's, there's, there's some game I got to pick up. So this was interesting. This was a very interesting interview, and I think you should definitely go check it out so you can have an unbiased point of view. Don't let me tell you anything about this. I want you to go check it out for yourself. But there was two things that this gentleman said in this interview that helped me to see there's a difference between someone like myself, possibly yourself, and some of the folks that are the voices of independence. I'm not saying it's a bad voice at all. I think he's doing a lot of things, and you can learn a lot of things from people that you may foundationally disagree with. Here's what he said about sort of, I guess, the reason he makes music the way he does. This man gets hundreds of thousands of streams on Spotify. He owns like, I think, 14 acres of land um, or 27 acres, excuse me, 27 acre farm. I think that's amazing. He gets to record from home. You know, I love that. Uh, he gets to tend to his farm, be, be around his family and his wife, living the dream. But then there's some things here that help me to recognize we can no longer judge independence 
as a one size fits all hat. That's the same problem we made in the traditional industry when everybody thought the idea of a hit song was one thing. In independence, we have to make sure we are taking nuggets of what these folks are saying, but also adding our own experience to the to the to the plate. But here's what he had to say when asked about, I guess, sort of some of his long term goals. Uh, my long term play, and it's not even so so far out, is to sell my catalog. Right. So if my catalog drops, that number drops. So I have to keep my catalog consistent until I sell. And then I will still build another catalog. But my idea is, right, because I'm more business than creative. I yeah. think. Um, don't let that don't let that pass you. Don't let that pass you. With all respect to Nick D, he just told you flat out. I am more business than I am creative on most levels. He has a plan to create all the music that he is making to one day sell it. I would never pass judgment on anybody for what they want to do for their business. But what I will say is there's no way in hell I sell my catalog, especially not to any entity that had no hand in it. If anything, I would much rather the catalog be sold after I'm gone so that the foundation of my work, say it did not reap all the benefits. This is just me. My family would be able to sell it and live on for generations. That would be the play for me. But while we're here, this is my business and this is my art. But I'm gonna let him finish. On most levels. So... I sell the catalog and I get this lump sum. It's capital gains tax instead of income tax. Uh -huh. So that's a that's a win. Then I roll it into real estate. So I don't pay any taxes on it because I roll it into another investment. Yeah. I think before we start pocket watching, no face, he is he does have a ten million dollar evaluation. I want to make sure that we're fair about our critiques of him. He has a ten million dollar evaluation right now. So he's making paper. <laughs> he's on a twenty what is it, twenty seven acre farm? You don't get on no a twenty seven acre farm being broke. <laughs> And then that real estate builds over the next seven years and it's tax free to roll into more and I can borrow on that money. Right. Tax free. So it's yeah. just like just a better way. It's of just a better it. way of diversifying my income. Yeah. And then I'll build another catalog and I'll sell that one. So he this could very well be the plan for you, too. Some of you value business a whole lot more. Right. Than the actual art. Although you and I may see things fundamentally different, I don't think this is a bad plan at all. I think if, if, if money is your goal, this is the route to go. If money is your goal, this is the route to go, right? Because this right here is setting yourself up to, to be a business that is in the business of pumping out records, doing it through a medium that's really fun, that he says that he enjoys. I believe him when he says he enjoys making music, but it's through a medium that you can make a bunch of these low overhead. He records in his van and he sells the catalog just to do it all over again. I don't know what the details of that is, but him talking about moving it to real estate and then, you know, getting some breaks on the taxes. Like, I think that's awesome. He's done his research. That's amazing, especially somebody who owns property. Yeah, I would hope that he knows about that. But that cannot be a one size fits all for everybody. Everybody's not looking at music as a hustle or as building seed money. This is not a means to get anywhere else. The art is the destination, right? I shouldn't say it's not a means, that's, that's, un, that's unfair. It is a means, but the means is not the top priority. It is a means to get to do shows, to sell merch, to do all these other things, sell physical products, but the means is not the top priority. The art is the top priority, which is why we are in the music business and not the record business. With that said, though, he says one more thing here, and I want to point you over to another timestamp. You just kind of kind of give us some thought. So I'm in the game of building catalogs and selling them instead of and but like most artists would be like, oh, you're not a real artist. You're not a true artist like those. Those are your babies. I'm not sentimentally attached to my songs. I am. I am. I am sometimes to a fault but I am sentimentally, my thing is this, when I think about, when I think about listening to songs that are on, on CDs right now, and I get them and I listen to them and I can remember like what room I was in 
the restaurant that was in the area, like the, the fast food restaurant me and the homie used to go to. I could kind of hear his grandma's TV in the background because we used to record in his room. I could like, I kind of like almost feel like I'm sitting in the day that we made that music. It's almost like I listen to songs and it feels like a photo album. So I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm saying that I just see it different. The sentimental value is the reason why you don't have a million projects from Curtis King. I got about 20. She only got a million because I genuinely love the art of making an album. It's hard for me to just look at it like it's not just, just that's just music. But once again, my brain's wired a little bit differently. I'm not saying I'm better. I'm just saying I'm different. But here's what he has to say about folks who are sentimental like me. I love to create music. I love it. it having a like the start to finish the song, the feeling I get when it's done. I love it, yeah. but I'm not sentimentally attached. Yeah. I think artists becoming sentimentally attached to their stuff holds them back. I, w I wish he would have talked about a little bit more of that, of why being sentimentally attached to your music holds you back. I can imagine, if I use my brain, I would imagine that there are artists who do baby their music and never release it. Now, that's where I'm kind of in the middle, right? I do feel like you need to put out your work. You need to complete your work to the best of your ability and put it out so that you just at least put some points on the board. Not even from a sports, I, just, I, had to, I shouldn't do the sports analogy. Just get the music out, get some feedback, but don't even wait for the feedback. Just get that part. When you complete something, your brain gets in the, 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 the habit of completing more things. So I do think that there are some people who are so sentimental about it, they never let their babies go. That's where I draw the line, right? But when I hear this, I'm like, this sounds a lot like what I was listening when I was listening to Dame. When we talk about streaming, when we talk about the necessity for art to be paid for, the value of art, this is foreign language when I speak to a Damien, right? And I get it, but now I'm starting to see it doesn't just exist in people who have positioned themselves as businessmen. This also exists even with artists. Let me have him finish this last time, Stem, because I thought this was really interesting. I mean, you talk to an artist, dude, they don't even, they don't even look at stats. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? They don't look at anything. They don't look at anything. They just want to create a song. Yeah. That's the trouble. The problem is this whole, it's a business. That's it. <laughs> the problem is it's a business. They don't want to run a business. You can't, it's not like, you know, you can't, it, this isn't a. I, I, this is where I feel like my love, my bias for the independent hip hop community like those that they shit on about this threshold, I just, I really just love y'all too much. <laughs> and there's no too much. I, if you ask them, they'll say I love y'all too much. This is when I'm like, I start thinking about people who use the term struggle rapper, struggle producer. I don't like that shit. I don't like that. But I'm gonna let them finish your point because this also drives home a deeper point that I wanna talk to you about that takes this whole thing full circle. Listen to this. Sport, you can't just be good and make a lot of money because you're the best it's like you, you're gonna get fucked over in the music yeah. industry if you're if you're the best <laughs> you don't want to be man i've never i've never and i still don't think this i'm not the best songwriter yeah i'm good i'm not the best singer i'm good not the best rapper i'm good but i give people what they want yeah yeah right and when i was doing my photography so Think about this for a second, and I want to make a very, very interesting point that maybe nobody's ever made when it comes to this space. He just admitted, and I respect him for being honest about this. He just admitted two things. One, he is a superior businessman than he is a creative. He says, matter of fact, I'm not the best singer. I'm not the best rapper, but I give the people what they want. Here's a question I have. If it's possible for him to be superior in business, but be, in his definition, close to okay, right? Decent, giving the people what they want in music. Why can the inverse not be true? Why can an artist not be efficient, amazing at music, but just be good enough at business, crossing their T's, dotting their I's? Maybe they even have a partner. Maybe they even have an attorney that can help them get to a very like basic level where they just give the people what they want. Just satisfy it to a level. How can one of those exist, but the other one not? I had this thought the other day and, I, and I'm interested in hearing your feedback on this now. 
because I want I want this to be a healthy conversation, even if you disagree with me. Why is it not possible for an artist to be? This is my this is my music. I care about my product the same way that you have a painter that cares so much about their paintings. They want to get to the highest level of creativity with their painting, but they're not no schlump when it comes to their business. They dot their I's and cross their T's. They're not the they're not Grant Cardone. <laughs> they're not the best businessman or businesswoman, but they know enough to give the people what they want to give the business what they want. So my question is, how can one of those sides be true and the other one not? Then I was talking to my guy, Stevie, and I thought this was really interesting. He said, because if they believe that was true, that an artist who was performing at a superior level could also have his business be at the level it needs to be, not even superior, just at a decent level, why would we need them? Why would we need them? Artists, those of you that treat this craft with the care and the patience that it deserves, and you can get your business to a level, I'm not telling you to be the best, but if you can get it to a level, you're a threat. I don't think they'll ever say it, but you're a threat because when the people have to choose, they want the superior art. Now, the reason why superior business tends to win over in a lot of situations is because of the rule of marketing. In marketing, it's not about who has the best product. The 22 immutable laws of marketing talks about this. It is not about who has the best product. It is about who has the strongest perception, the strongest memory within the consumer's mind. That is one of the laws of marketing, right? So the best product doesn't always win. But usually what happens when the best product doesn't win is that they have not learned the proper basics or principles of marketing, which would mean you getting your business to a level, not more superior than your art, but just to a level. This DIYs is the reason why today after this, I'm not doing no debating like they can say whatever they want. I'm getting ready to talk to an attorney, not my official attorney yet, but I'm getting ready to talk to an attorney because there's a lot of things happening right now that need to be addressed. The first thing that needs to be have that needs to be addressed is the admin work of my business, of my music, because nobody really properly taught me that all these videos on YouTube. Folks teach you how to click on a website, how to log in and what it looks like after it's done. Folks didn't really break that process down and not that it was a responsibility, but I just didn't really have people around me that I trusted to teach me the right way. Now I have an attorney that I'm talking to who knows her shit. And today, the whole day, we're going to be dedicating to getting my admin right before my music. You know what I'm saying? To ensure that I'm getting everything I should be getting from my music so that my business goes to a level. The issue is that these folks who speak about you need to have a better business acumen than your art don't love the art. Admittedly, don't love the art, at least not the same way that we do. And this, to me, is the reason why music sounds so much like shit. Because you teach people when they're very early stages. The art is not a priority. Business is the only thing that matters. This is going to rub a lot of people the wrong way, but I say this respectfully, especially to all my white and Caucasian friends. Because you even know this to be true. So many laws of marketing were intended to market to white men. There's an entire demographic of people, not just black people, of different demographics that don't have the same buying habits, but they've been marketed to the same way since the 1950s, 40s and 30s. This is not coming from a place of ignorance. I've taken marketing classes, marketing advertising principles, um, marketing one on one. I got a marketing certificate when I was already an active rapper. But so much of the way that things are marketed were intended to just be for one demographic, one race. So now when we get into the space and we see people who are trying to preach this, oh, you need to be business first. Is it, I'm asking for what demographic does that serve the best? Not saying that we haven't seen people of other races benefit from it. But my question is this. How can we have a one size fits all when everybody doesn't have the same business? How can we have a one size fits all when everybody doesn't have the same principles? And how can we say what success is when we haven't even taken into consideration People have varying levels of success. And my thing is this. This is the big question I have. 
of all the people that have been criticizing me, I would need five hands to show you the amount of people who are criticizing my decisions. I can probably count to two people that actually tried to help me be successful at it. So this is why I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed because it's one thing to disagree. It's one thing to not want to see somebody win, but to also double down and insult their integrity, to double down and not help. Not because I needed your help, because I'm just like, dog, I'm maneuvering a new, I'm, do you understand how terrifying as an artist this is to go against a big dog that makes 13 billion, whatever, 14, whatever they make a year. You know how terrifying that is to share with your people? Hey, I know you've been listening to my music on streaming for the last 12 years. I'm taking that shit down. You know how terrifying it is to sit in front of, to talk to your manager, who's one of the, my former manager, who's one of the most smartest, greatest minds that I've known in music. Tell me how dumb of an idea this is. Not his exact words, but kind of what he alluded to. Or inconvenient, I should say. Do you know how hard it is to sit in front of somebody that I have the ultimate respect for and, and, and a Russell? And he laughs on the bench. He's like, hey, what are you doing? Put your shit back up. But I can tell you this. Even when I decided not to do it at first, I, there was a point in time where I was like, I'm not going to take my music off of streaming. This is this is a little bit like I don't have I don't have the capital to support such a thing like this. I'm glad that I follow through. I'm glad that I follow through. Let me explain why I'm glad that I follow through. What I didn't anticipate were me and my buddy Stevie Crooks. I talk about him all the time because he and I, man, we've been seeing eye to eye on a lot of things. I'm so happy that I met somebody that was like, you're not crazy because you're crazy. You're crazy because you know you're crazy, but you still be out here trying to act normal. Because of him, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Specifically on Instagram, there's been a lot of talk about the fairness of the payment system in Spotify. This actually comes courtesy of one of the most popular female Latina rappers in LA. Just to show you my album promotion, <laughs> That shit is so, it, 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 I'm disappointed. Just, just, just to show you some proof of concept, because I know this matters to some of y'all. This right here is Reverie. The homegirl Reverie. I've known her for some years. And we don't talk all the time. We don't talk all the time. But when I see her in, in public, it's all love. 177,000 followers. Like, there's no benefit for her to speak about the things she's been speaking about. Oh, but she's activated. Can I share a few things? Because they've been attacking, been attacking sis too, and I think it's unfair. She shared this on her Instagram. Around the same time I was running my album campaign. <laughs> Y'all, that's crazy. So many artists showing off their Spotify streams. How much actual money did you make this year? How much money do you have saved for an emergency? What are you investing in? How many vacations did you take this year? Artists focus on likes and streams and are still broke as fuck. Or still selling drugs, risking their freedom to get by. Go where the money is, not where the likes are. I don't got my little button here, but she would for sure get that. She posted this. And a lot of people agreed and a lot of people disagreed. Here's what she said as a follow up video worried about anybody i'm doing great i'm fine but the thing is i have a platform and i like to use my platform to help people how do i help people i help people through my life experience so when i realize something about life i'm gonna talk about it because i know it's gonna help a lot of people and there's one thing i realize about this life is that if someone's not ready to receive a message they're not gonna receive the message so this message is not for people who are in denial about the fact that most artists are starving artists mm. okay this is not for you guys this is for people that want to make a living off of their art come on now, maybe you don't need to be balling but if you want to raise a family if you want to be able to pay your rent Hello. if you want to be able to go on vacations and enjoy life you got to really think about your art as a business and my point of talking about what i talked about in the last post was that 
people nowadays want to be famous on TikTok and Instagram, but they're broke in real life. <laughs> Damien, I'm sorry that you have such a weird point of view of your friend Curtis. I thought my track record was pretty clean. But to think that this is not a movement in motion and that people like myself who love this art are not fed up. This is so the, the truth of the matter is my album selling three thousand five hundred dollars worth of copies in a week. That money is not a huge amount. I've seen that many times over selling products, right? Like I appreciate every dollar. The thing that it shows me, though, is that there's a lane that if you give it your consistency, your time, top tier customer service, there is a lane for you to make a living as an artist, which is part of the reason why I was like, you know what, YouTube might make sense because I can help people by sharing my knowledge and I could also possibly even become a YouTube partner at some point for sharing my knowledge. Sounds like a pretty cool job. I had it for nine years. But when you hear me talking about it, that's fine. I, I truly believe that Damien doesn't dislike me, but I think I say a lot of things that he absolutely disagrees with. I could feel the energy on the interview. Here's what I told Reverie though. I said, some folks unfortunately confuse tough love with hate. But if they took a step back and just listened to what you're saying, they'll see it comes from a, pl a place of love and wanting to see artists win. However, I'm seeing firsthand, sis, some don't want the responsibility of winning. This is not a smear campaign. This is not about talking. I don't want to call nobody out their name. That's not what I'm concerned with. What I'm concerned with, even during my album promotion, are the rights of artists. There's a good chance I will not see the highest levels of success as an independent artist compared to if I was a, a newer artist 20 years from now. I feel like independence is going to look very different. But it's important that we challenge one another when we have these monolithic views, these these one size fits all views of what success and independence is. You get to define that for yourself. If it is you replacing your job, your minimum wage job with your music money, you don't need a you don't even need you don't need streaming in general. You need to figure out how to develop the, the skill of selling so that even if you did want to go to streaming, you know how to sell. Not because you want to become the best salesman, but because you know your art is here. Your marketing, your business, maybe down here. What happens if you get it just 50% better? You think that could help out the art? That's the difference when I talk, when I listen to somebody like a reverie that says your art is a business. I know when I listen to her art, she talks about topics that I see people crying at her shows because she's talking about, I can't say the word, but suicide, like I can't say the word, but she literally talks about topics that people are like, and she talks about it from a very real place, vulnerable place. And some people consider it in or underground hip hop, but it's like, no, it's just real shit. She's saying this interesting on the other side of LA. Shout out to the homie Eastside K boy. I've been talking to him non-stop the last few weeks as I've been on this campaign. See, this is the thing about Dame. Like, this is why I had to make this video. You have no idea all the conversations I'm having with independent artists. They see it. They feel something's in the air. Feels like a renaissance. But let me not be dramatic. Here's what he had to say after we talked about my experience using Even to sell my album. Sorry, K boy. I am so happy to announce that I'm officially a part of Even Biz. I want to shout out my homeboy Lil Russell for making a call and set me up with these dope people over there at Even Biz. And my homeboy Curtis King. So, what's Even Biz? Even Biz is like a platform that is like direct to consumer. And I love it because you can put up your project and your fans and your supporters can come to you and get your music directly without having to wait for these DSPs to get the all these streaming or wait for it to come out on DSPs. You can come get it straight from me while we lose, using this platform. And it's damn near like the Proud to Pay campaign that Nip did and what Russell was doing, which I may have a base set price, but you can pay anything that you want. As come long on. As you support me. I'm happy with that. So even biz is the way to go. Shout out my nigga LaRussell again. 
My nigga made over 150,000. Curtis King numbers is growing every day. And I see that even business is just the way to go. So he also goes on to say, shout out, special shout out to La Russell. You different. Appreciate you and my guy Curtis King for having these long conversations with me and helping me to believe more in myself. You think the person that is doing this shit for a fucking album campaign is going to have these long conversations? Don't ever disrespect me like that. Don't ever be little. When a movement is happening, don't ever disrespect me like that. I'm disappointed. Because if you know my heart, you know where I stand. I'm disappointed because I feel like you know me better than that. You know me for some years now. Not personally, obviously, because you would know that that's not an accurate statement. You think all of this shit is for an album campaign? These are two folks from two different sides of L.A., independent artists that want to maximize what their art can do financially. Don't do that with me. You don't pick the person that has a track record of giving game for free. In 1400 video, you don't choose that with me. You don't belittle this. And you know what? That's not enough exhibits. You're right. Shout out to D1. If you don't know D1. 582,000 followers. Well, he recently also went with Even, the same company I went through. And check out what he had to say about selling his first thousand dollar album. One thousand dollars for my album from the hood to Harvard. That's what my man Wall Street Trapper just paid for, yo. I'm beyond humbled. I am beyond grateful, you heard me. And that's why I'm allowing my people to name their own price for this album. Because streaming services could never, you dig? So when people value your heart and your art, they show up in a whole different way for you, man. Thank you. I'm on Harvard's campus right now, you feel me? Yeah, the album just dropped today, From the Hood to Harvard, available at d1music.com, you dig? And man, look, God is great. All right, I'm gonna, uh, go enjoy the music. Hey, man. I'm out. Oh. <laughs> A movement is happening right now. A movement is happening right now. And when you look across the board and you're like, I never even would have known that you and I saw eye to eye on this. Let, let, let's figure this out. Come on over here. Oh, you dealing with the same thing. Mind you, D1, Reverie and K-Boy are folks who do phenomenal at streaming. Way more than I do. They're saying the same thing. Maybe that's not enough. How about one more? Dizzy Wright. <laughs> Shout out to Dizzy Wright. I've never had an opportunity to actually meet this gentleman, but I know the legend that he is, especially independent. He put out his project, I want to say, close to a week ago, five days ago. So 200 units would even. And an average price at $22.82. cents. That is the equivalent of 1,304,060 streams. From 200 supporters. Please don't insult my intelligence. Please don't belittle. Please don't belittle what's happening right now as just. My thing is this. You can call me the exception to the rule. Matter of fact, let me put this here on the screen. You can call me the exception to the rule, and that's that's completely fine. I get what I get when you have interest in financing a comp. You have interest in making money off of a platform like streaming. This is not in your best interest to agree with anything that I'm saying. But I had this conversation with that same attorney, and she said, "Question. Let me ask you a question, Curtis. Do you think these people would care nearly as much if you were just flat out wrong?" I had to think about that. She said, do you think these people would be as aggressive of attacking you if you were flat out wrong? I had to think about that for a second. And it dawned on me. When people are flat out wrong and don't know what the hell they're talking about, nobody attacks them. They leave them alone. They leave that person alone. Because what's the purpose? What's the what, what are we bothering them for? You feel me? Like, what do we bother in for? I am an artist that took a bit of a hiatus from music. So I have not been consistent in building my fan base. Matter of fact, most of the people that are in here are because of my content. But I think it's very fascinating 
that here I am. And today I only sold one unit, but I'm grateful for whoever that was because I know that I have your email and I have your phone number so I can stay in touch with you. Unlike what I couldn't do on streaming. But I think it's interesting for somebody that spent so much time away just doing content. I was able to sell three thousand six hundred dollars worth of music. One hundred and twenty eight units. That's only one hundred and twenty eight people that accounted for that. If I released a project every month and I had no other streams of income. Let's just say we haven't even passed a month yet. But let's just assume, let's just say this is 3.6, 3.6, excuse me, 3,600 times 12. This alone, if I put a project every month and it could get around here, that's $43,000. In addition to the income that I'm making from YouTube, because it's still my part-time job as a reaction channel, as a content channel. This is the money that you can support a family on. This is the money that allows me to do what I love. <laughs> it allows me to not have to go on. I don't have, I love touring. I miss my family. I love studio sessions, not late studio sessions. I love being able to determine my own time. I love being able to wake up and sit there and play the keys in my own house. I love being able to go downstairs and go perform in my own stage. Yeah, it's carpeting. Yeah, we're renting. So fucking what? I get to do that. I get to stop what I'm doing. I get... I get to say, you know what? I want to do a B showcase today, ladies and gentlemen, and go live and talk to 50, 60 people. Last time it was, a, before that it was 100 people. Do you think that I'm walking around here trying to muscle up some marketing? Cause I'm, pl please more porridge. Does that sound like somebody that's living in scarcity? Or does that sound like somebody that already won? So then Curtis, if you already won, why are you reacting? Because the educational point is way too important. This is a special moment, DIYers. We called it. We fucking called it. How many videos can you go back this whole year that said the climate is changing? People are thinking differently. It's our time, DIYers. How many videos have I said that? Now look at this. It's shifting. One last thing I want to react to in the midst of this. Nothing bad. But many of you might have saw my advertisement where I said the revolution will not be streamed. If you didn't know, that was a reference to Gil Scott Heron, who very famous, famously said the revolution would not be televised. I remember seeing this video years ago. I'm going to share it with you right now. But here he explains what exactly he meant when he said the revolution would not be televised. Almost there. Let's get to it. Let's see. Almost here. I want, I want to share this with you. And then I really do want to get your feedback on this. Um, this video is going to stay up. I need people to digest this. I need them to have their own thoughts Let's about this. Back. All that good stuff. All right. I found the video. All right. Back to it. Uh, DJ Payne one, I see, I, I see, I see the message and I, and you know, it's nothing but love. This is not no expose. Everything that I said, I say to you, and this is with love. I don't want nobody to get this twisted. This is not meant to make nobody look bad. I say all of this with love because I genuinely love anybody who wants to help artists because we're not the easiest to work with. We're not the most rational thinkers, but that's part of our genius. I just don't like when you see my track record. There's a, there's a young lady that I'm not even going to mention her name because I feel like it's just that's that's part of the that's part of the rollout at this point. Who who now wants to accuse me of being money hungry like the other guy, you know, the other guy. My question is this, if I'm so money hungry, how the hell did I go broke? Not currently. But how the hell did I go broke? Not even two years ago. Money hungry don't make you broke. I almost lost my business. I almost lost my ability to do what I love for a living. Even worse than that, I lost my I almost lost my ability to support my family. Because of some advertisement marketing 
situation gone wrong. And in the midst of all that shit happening, I'm getting attacked from all different directions where people want to make diss songs because they think that shit is cute. Not even being concerned about this person's mental health. I'm a grown man. I can handle it. Obviously, I can handle it. Not being concerned about what's currently going on in that person's brain or that person's life. Just worried about their own goddamn ego. So I get all of this attention from all these different places. But once again, Curtis, ain't this what you prayed for? Curtis, you can't have success, fam. You can't get to the other part of the exit of the ride until you get on the ride. And sometimes the ride is bumpy, Curtis. Stop bitching, dog. Let them say what they're going to say. But the truth of the matter is, I am on the other side of the ride. But you just, you, you know, just like anybody who's going to Six Flags, that last part of the ride is probably the bumpiest. That's what I'm going through right now. I'm catching a lot of steam from a lot of people that I'm like, Really? You gonna question my character? After all this time, this is what you do. But it's part of the process. Check this out really quick. Gil Scott Heron talks about what he meant when he said the revolution would not be televised. So uh, the revolution wasn't televised in the 60s. Uh, is it gonna be televised in the 90s? Well, you know, the, the, the catchphrase, what that was all about, uh, the revolution will not be televised. That was about the fact that the first change that takes place is in your mind. You have to change your mind before you change the way you live and the, and the way you move. So when we said that the revolution will not be televised, we were saying that, like, that, that, that the thing that's going to change people is something that no one will ever be able to capture on film. It'll just be something that you see and all of a sudden you realize, I'm on the wrong page. <laughs> or I'm on the right page, but I'm on the wrong note. Come on. And I've got to get in sync with everyone else to understand what's happening in this country. It was really hard for me. I'm going to speak from a very sincere place. This whole thing has been sincere. I know there's been a little bit of emotion. I tried to keep it as even kill as possible because people tend to try to negate what I'm saying because of how I say it. The delivery. People tend to try to negate what I'm saying because of how I say it. Oh, he's angry. Somebody in here earlier, I didn't want to address it, said, calm down. No. <laughs> First of all, I don't know what that person's emotional IQ is. So for you to give me pointers on how to have a better emotional IQ, I don't know if I could trust that advice. Until I meet you. I have come a long way. This is not a expose piece. This is not even a defense piece. This is when you see it happen. When you see what I saw that sent me down this journey. Remember what I said and why I said it. Because you're going to go through the same thing. If you want success in this space, those who are criticizing the harshest, you're going to get what you want. You're going to get that notoriety. You're going to get that motion, that visibility, the, 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 the opportunity to be a partner on YouTube and make your money. You're going to get that. But what you're going to see on the other end is the same way that you attained it is going to be the same way that you're going to have to fight for it. I've gave, I've given my, 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 my heart to the space and uh, to a fault because it's my fault. But at the same time, I don't think that that warrants people going on social media and I'm talking about Bussy Works right now. I don't think that that warrants him and the, the Laurent person. I don't even know who the fuck this guy is. Going to my friends on social media, following them and trying to have arguments with them about things that I have said. I just wish that grown men could move on. It's giving psychotic X energy. Move on. I'm not even in this space anymore. I'm not even in this space anymore. I'm free. I'm on the other. I'm on the other side. I have no. I, I took down every one of my products that had to do with anything in terms of servicing the community those who have already had access i got a special gift for you those of you that have already bought in years ago and you've been a student inside my curtisking.com you're going to get access to every other course related to what you got so if you got the fl studio beginners course i'm going to also give you the advanced course for free 
You're also going to get, um, what's the other one? Uh, the sampling course for free just because you were there on the other side. And because I'm not offering them to the public, you're the ones that are the early adopters. You should get all that. Those of you that got the uh, music producer flow course, you're going to get the YouTube course and the other thing else. It's not a sales pitch. This is just me letting you know how fucking done I am and how I it's the only thing that's been trying to taint my happiness in this situation is people who won't let me move on. They're pulling at me. It's like crabs in a bucket. You win. You win. You're the best. You're the top dog. I'm gone. But it's very interesting when I can't even get to my own timeline and enjoy YouTube like everybody else without seeing my reaction face on other people's shit. Without somebody attacking my integrity. Without somebody attacking what they think are shady business practices, even though I've been admittedly a bad person at business. I've sucked at business. There's so many things that I do know and so many things that I don't know. It's really hard to be efficient at business for me and make the, the amount of content that I make. But I speak about what I do know, which makes that a bit easier. But it's really challenging to be efficient at work and also be efficient at music. I suck at business. I don't know how the hell I've been able to have the success that I've had. Maybe because I'm, I'm not stupid. I'm smart. But being smart doesn't mean that you're going to have the best business results. I suck at it. I sucked at streaming too. I really did. 2,000, 2000 listeners on Spotify. I sucked at it. Admittedly so. But I didn't just pick my basketball up and leave. I said, maybe this is not for me. But when I saw the reaction from people was like, how dare you even have a thought like that? What are you going to do? The same thing any business does when they don't put their business in Amazon. They figure it out. Then you know what I realized? The biggest people who always attack me are business minded first. The biggest quote unquote artists that attack me are business, business minded first. It's very rare that somebody who loves this art as much as I love this art ever attacks. When I saw that, then I said, stop reacting. Stop reacting. They don't understand the love affair, the pure love, not even affair, the pure love some of us have for this art form. Right? They don't understand the pure love that we have for this art form. It's a foreign language to them. This shit is nothing more than good times and MP3 exports. It's nothing but real estate. And I say that respectfully because everybody's entitled to have their own business model. But it's not that for me. But I challenge those out here. I challenge those out here who are having these conversations of independent artists that are admittedly better businessmen than artists. I applaud you. Better business, like being a businessman, a great businessman, I know all the things you got to take into consideration. The demographics, the uh, the temperature of your audience, the right, the, the time of the year. Like these are things that you really have to consider when you're doing business. It's not easy. But doing the basics can be simple, not easy, but simple. It's a difference. I'm finally at a place where I said, you know what? I'm going to push away from all of the YouTube content that I've been doing about all these different. Th I'm just going to do reaction content on this channel. I'm going to move my live streams and my cookups to a new channel on that channel. Don't come there asking for distro kid advice. Don't come there asking for nothing. I'm in there to cook up and make music. If you want to see somebody who loves their art and if you even care about my art, I would suggest you come there. If not, fam, don't even worry about it. Because I really don't want anybody over there that doesn't want to be over there, that wants to nitpick at things. That's not what I'm doing this for. But I would like to share this with y'all because when you don't see me live streaming except for reaction videos, I need you to understand where we're at. Uh-oh, now they're going to accuse me of... <laughs> this whole stream was just about promoting your other... No, because I don't want everybody over there. More is not better. <laughs> More is not better. Relevant is better. More is not better to me than relevance. I want the people who are supposed to be here. 
So you'll see it pinned right now. If you're interested in going to go check out my other YouTube channel where I'll be making music, if you want to follow my career as an artist, I'm going to be giving out tips along the way. Like as I'm learning to today is an admin day, an admin day this is the first time I'm excited about like understanding everything that I've been messing up with my PROs, everything that I've been messing up with my copyrights, everything that I've been messing around with all these things. I get to talk to a lawyer, to an attorney about this. I'm excited. But I started the morning excited, and then after seeing the clips, I got disappointed. I'm human. Sometimes I got thicker skin, sometimes I got thinner skin. Today, maybe it was thinner skin. I just felt like it was relevant. I felt like it was needed to express this. But dog, when you think Curtis King, you can think whatever you want to think. One thing that should never come into question is how much I love this art. This art still gives me goosebumps. Planning these shows, these at-home experiences still give me goosebumps. Like I get emotional listening to my own album. That's not a that's not a, a plot, not a ploy for you to go listen to it. I don't give a shit if you choose to go listen to it. It made me feel something and it continues to do that. And it gives me goosebumps when I think about what I can do in the future. Just please, please, if you say you got respect for me and I talked to Dame off of the line, I said, bro, just please be honest with me. Do you have an issue with me outside of this streaming conversation? He said, nah, bro, I rock with you. That don't sound like you rock with me. And I, and I would hope that you would have a conversation with me on the phone before going public with this. Because it feels like you're saving face instead of talking to the person that you had so much respect for that you brought me on the platform to debate it. Dog, I, if you would have said there's no way Curtis comes on the platform, I wouldn't have lost no sleep. But marketing is not just a ploy like a lot of business people handle it. Marketing is a conversation. They're just not used to somebody who is artist centric, art centric, being this good at it. Akira Beats, it sucks that you have to go through this. No, 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 no. Hear me out. I, I, Akira Beats, no, 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 this doesn't suck. You know why this doesn't suck? This is the entry fee, the admission fee I must pay to get to the next level. I get to become a full-time artist. But you're not going to leave. Like, there was a gentleman that I heard one time that said, when the old you dies, stop complaining about it being painful. Nightmare, you got me, bro? You got me, bro? Nightmare, we for real gonna work, bro? I'm in full artist mode, bro. You gonna work with me, bro? I would love that. I would love that, bro. Honestly, I wanna work with people that I genuinely respect. That, man, I'd be so amazing to work with you. Genuinely from the heart, bro. I forgot what point I was making, but... I love it. I love this shit, bro. Like, this is... Okay, that's what the point I made. This is... If you say like, bro, I want to be successful at this. I want to be a full time artist. I want to do this. I want to do this. If I had a conversation with God and God said, OK, son. You can have all that. And I see that as being a part of your journey. You, you, you listen to me when I asked you to take this nine year detour and you didn't ask me how long it was going to be. This is God talking, right? But you listen to me, son. Now. I'm going to warn you. Because of the kind of impact that you made, because of the kind of truth that you speak to, you're going to piss off a lot of people, a lot of powerful people. There's things that I cannot talk to you guys about right now that are happening offline that would make me sound paranoid. But I guarantee you, I'm in a good mental space. But shit is happening. Spooky shit. But that's how I know that I'm walking in purpose. But if God told me, hey, Curtis, Son, I think that this is the most appropriate thing for you because of the headspace you're in. But son, before you can go there, before you can go there, I need you to I need you to be strong enough to get through here. If that's the case, bring it on. I don't care who it is. Bring it on. Because I know that this conversation, this campaign allowed me to speak to how the hell can I speak to young guru for two hours on the phone <laughs> how the hell am I on the phone with young how the hell is hit boy saying I'm giving him and his prop man young guru right here do I need do I need him 
how can I be on the phone with a young guru for two hours? The shit gives me, get me, it gives me goose, but it gives me emotional, bro. Like, how, why am I the one going up there to LaRussell and talking to him? And he's saying, like, even though we disagree on the streaming, he said, Curtis, you deserve to be here. Something is happening that is much bigger than me and my funky ass music. I'm just grateful that God chose me and told me that I'm this strong because it's a lot of shit I can't speak to. A lot of shit that you guys are seeing, but just recognize where that comes from. Salute the legend, young guru. Dog, you ain't got to reach out to me. I, I, I'm a nobody in your world, but you saw something. You told me the first time I talked to you, you said, I got something that I feel like you and the DIYers need to know. And I was like, dog, you know who the DIYers are? So, I'm gonna go do this admin work. And um, yeah, the best is yet to come. I hope Disruptors, it's interesting to watch it happen in real time. Now, you, I know you know. If anybody knows, now knows what's going on. But um, I'll, I'll end it like this because I think it's unfair for this to be a one-sided type of thing. Thank you, Clear Vision. I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna end it like this. Dame, Damian Ritter, I, I gave you all kind of love and props at the end of that conversation. We just had a fundamental disagreement. You and I are wired a bit differently because your art form is business. My art form is music. So fundamentally, you and I are going to have a difference of opinion, and that's never an issue. I think anybody with a high emotional IQ, you should be exposed to opinions that are different from yours if you seek to grow. I'm ready to grow. I'm not, I, I'm 38, I'm turning 39 next month. I don't want the same thinking I had at 23 or 29, 39 next month. I, I don't, I don't want, all of this other stuff is other stuff. It's not the main thing. I want to grow. I want to grow. So then that's what I got to do. But um, Damien, you know, I, I, I still give you the utmost of respect and I get make sure that this comes from a place of love. But when you question the only reason I address you and not none of these other goofies out here is because I respect you as a man and as a businessman and as a trailblazer. But when you have somebody that you have such a high regard for a respect that you say, yes, I will come on there and debate you, even though my own opinion is not debatable for what's best for me, I'll come talk to you. And then I see this channel, my guy Payne, use me for three videos, even videos where I'm not even in them. But I get accused of using this whole thing as a marketing tactic. Don't discredit these long winded conversations where I genuinely doing the same thing you see me doing for the last nine years, helping my peers. Don't do that with me, man. Up until now, I ignored it, but I feel like, no, no, this is a lesson that could help somebody. Because if you intend to be successful, get ready. When you're the closest, the, the devil gets the busiest. That is not a pun. That is the truth. No pun intended. When you get the closest to your goals, the devil gets the busiest. They stretched the interview and I did not once promote any clips from it as social media content. Why? Because I had a conversation that I'm already talking about. Keith Owens said, may sound cheesy, but the most inspirational producer on YouTube. You know what's crazy? Being that made me a target as well. I'm glad that I was that. I'm glad that I became a target, but that's just because it's who I am. I tried to bring something different to the producer community. And I hope that you don't feel like I'm saying that the positivity that you have given me has outweighed or is louder than the negativity. At times, the negativity is really, really loud. As, as a human being speaking, call me like whatever, like sensitive, I don't care, but I'm being human, I'm being transparent. Sometimes that loud shit gets really, really loud because it's like, why would you say that about me? Why? What did I do? But your love has been very, very loud, especially in this time period where it's like, I've been challenged in a lot of ways. That's how I know I'm walking in purpose. All right, I got to get ready for this admin day. Like I said, it's love 
Payne one, DJ Payne one. I think you've been, an, I think you're still an amazing voice in this community that is needed. Um, Damien, I think that you're still an amazing voice in this in, in this space. Aaron, I, I love what I'm hearing. I wish I knew more about everything that you do, but obviously you would not be aligned with them if you weren't doing your damn thing and you just had, I could just tell you got that, right? With all due respect though, I mean it when I say I'm disappointed because if you got respect for me, allow me to be a part of that conversation without you making such crazy, not Aaron, but Damien, making these crazy assumptions about where my heart is at. That's a weird thing to attack. Where my integrity is at. Oh man. Me? Am I the one that you want to question that about? That's cool. Uh, resist from the evil. We on to better things. Yeah. Yeah. Now said, uh, bless you, sir. It's a good and necessary fight. I think it is. Because you know what? Up until, like, I had my proof of concept, but it was really easy to be like, he's the exception. This nigga's an exception to the rule. Nobody care about that shit. Ooh, Curtis King. The reason why that happened because you got 200,000 subscribers. But if you recall, do not let them rewrite history. I hardly promoted my album before it came out on my YouTube channel. Because I know most of y'all didn't care. He, you haven't seen me rap for nine years. Right? Not as the prominent content. Y'all didn't care. Most, most of y'all didn't care. So I didn't do it. But I did promote on Instagram, Twitter, and kept the conversation. CJ the cynic said, ain't nothing wrong with telling somebody to back up off you. I mean, especially when I haven't questioned nobody's integrity in this. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I have not once said anything but respectable things. But to tell me this whole thing is an album campaign when you got folks like the homie uh, uh, Eastside K-Boy from completely different backgrounds than me saying like, Yo, I really fuck with what you're doing, Curtis. And I feel like there's so much I can learn from you. His manager used to be my OG back when I was doing Blue Division work with Glasses Malone. He's listening to me giving advice about this thing. Then he's giving me advice about making sure you got your ISRC code, which is something I want to talk to today about with my attorney. So she's not my attorney, my, my consultant. Um, but with that said, you no longer will see music streams on this channel. You will see them here on this channel. If you are interested and coming to watch me make music, especially in the month of December, you are more than welcome. You're more than welcome. If my music is not for you, don't even bother. I got the content that you need. Because even though this is my part-time job, one live stream will give you everything that you need. All right? Respectfully, I appreciate the love, the support, the challenging of the opinion. All that is, is very, very, very appreciative. I will say this, though. Curtis King is 92% love. I'm 8% petty, though. This is being real. I don't know if you saw that, but Spotify laid off 17%. Man, young guru, you can give me that game? All right, then I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will humbly accept that game, young guru, for getting my ISRC. I, what better source? <laughs> so, yeah, um, legend, thank you. Thank you for thank you for 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 reminding me I'm not crazy to feel this way. I don't seek validation, but fam, that meant a lot to me. That meant a lot. You 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 made my motherfucking year. Cause let let some of these folks out here tell it. I'm just lying for the sake of lying. But once again, as as the attorney that I talked to said, would they be this aggressive if you were wrong? I mean like dead wrong. Probably not. All right, my friends, and you can check this out, stamp it up, do whatever you want to do. I hope this is the last video. I don't think there'll be a necessity for it. I, I'm just talking to people that I genuinely have a love for and continue to have a love for. I'm just disappointed. Family gets disappointed in other people, too. That's all it is. But uh, with love. Actually, no, no, no. Let, let's let's end this out with Stevie Crooks. <laughs> I want to end this out with Stevie Crooks. Oh, wait a minute. One more thing. On the 16th, this will go on this channel, right? On the 16th, Stevie Crooks and I are doing a live virtual show from an undisclosed location, a free show, December 16th. You're, you're invited. That one I do want to share on this. But I'm going to practice kind of in private on my other channel, right? 
The 16th, you saw the, the Storm Symphony show, right? This one's going to be different. Me and Stevie Crooks, listen to him. Oh, much love to you, DIYers. Always had charisma. Now I got a lot of flows. Wasn't like Rizza. I was more like Mac and Ghost. Now I'm like Rizza. Cause the beats get the checks rolled. My niggas pushing P and they got the best quotes. Pay the fee and they sent off on the next boat. When you live the fast life, man, you gotta step slow. And watch your surroundings. Cause karma stay proud. You ask what I do for a living. I said style and my fan base look like Bad Bunny and J Balvin's. How many times I showed I was brilliant, I stopped counting. When I die, they gon' call my face on Murder Val Mountain. Don't forget the shades, don't forget the chains, don't forget the beard, don't forget the fade, don't forget the capital S and the C in my name. And the yes, yes, by the C, clear my brain. Little nigga. Where were you when you was. Hey, what up, nigga? Yeah. Where were you when you was. Uh. Yo. Me and Hayes finally got something Make you wanna hop out and pop some uh, Got the block jumping Like letting Javante Davis swing on you I got knots coming Girls gon' wild style, got drop tops coming You got a lot of followers, but that's not nothing They can't follow you to the grave When the shot's dumping Hit them up style Tupac something You not Tupac, you a TikTok lover Dancing on camera like my chains, dancing on shorty face, assassin. Every song get up on first 48. When I first learned to rhyme and I wrote my first 48, I was still talking that shit. So let's get the story straight. In Miami in the Lambie with the Florida plates. Playing taste like candy, but eye candy. Tugging on my waist, banana click, hit a Draco. Like it's a hungry egg. That was cool, but we don't need another fucking Drake. 